Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the Namaste experience. It's so good to have all of you here this beautiful Monday morning. So I want to begin by saying that I am going to be stepping back for about a week. I am going on retreat starting tomorrow. And my Franciscan community, we come together once a year for what's called chapter, which is a, a week-long experience. So we come together starting on, on Tuesday, tomorrow, and but we have you all set. I'll see the two of you afterwards, and we'll talk about how we do things here. But Vicky is going to be bringing in some very special guests who I think you're going to be very excited about. Margie is going to be sharing a couple of sessions. So you are all in very good hands. There's nothing you need to do but just show up and wake up. That's good. Show up and wake up. But in talking to Vicki, we decided that we want this week's sessions in one way or another to be about surrendering. Surrendering into this divine current. Letting go. Realizing that on my own, I can do nothing. I don't know anything if I'm trying to rely upon only that which is in my mind or my consciousness. We have to surrender all of that in order to be known. Or actually, the truth is you're always known, but we need to know that we're known. So as a way of jumping in that direction, I, I just opened okay. up. Uh -oh. Ooh. Yeah, but I did I changed the settings. M, M, M. <laughs> you better mute it. <laughs> Changing your settings. <laughs> That's all we really do is change our settings, but that doesn't change anything really. You, you, you may go into the settings and, you know, even put it on airplane mode. But that doesn't really change anything. As soon as you take it out of airplane mode, everything that's been waiting comes right in immediately. All the messages, text and otherwise. Anyway, so yes, the master teacher within. I just opened it up a moment ago and I just want to read a paragraph that I opened to. When your mind is focused only on the beloved or only on love, you realize that the beloved is always focused on you. That is such a simple but profound statement. Let me read it one more time. When your mind is focused only on the beloved or on love itself, itself with the capital I and love with the capital L, you realize that the beloved is always focused on you. But you can't realize that until you give your full focus. But not the you that you've claimed, but the self with a capital S that was claimed before time began. The self that was claimed before time began. It is this divine self that sees only itself. Once again, it is this divine self that sees only this divine self or sees only itself and knows itself to be all in all. There is so much packed in there. As you surrender your limited self sense of self with the small s, you enter into a state of union with the beloved, but only when you surrender that limited self. In this state, the only thing that exists is pure love, love itself. There are no boundaries, no limitations, and no fear. All that remains is the infinite nature of Self with a capital S, the infinite nature of the self and the ecstatic joy that comes with it. That's how you know when you dive into that ecstatic joy that has no opposite, that ecstatic passion that knows only itself. 
then you will know the self and you will recognize yourself as that self. Does that make sense? You will recognize yourself as the self with the capital S through that ecstatic expansion into a joy that knows no opposite, a peace that surpasses this world. That's what St. Paul called it. And it's always been there. This is not a new thing. The mystics of every tradition have known this and, and have swum in this ocean. Is it swum or swam? Whatever. They're swimming in this ocean right now. Just as you are, but with your eyes closed. Open your eyes. That's all you're asked to do. Open your eyes and see and feel and know that which has always been seen, felt, and known. Okay, so that's our beginning. It's going to be our entry into the experience of surrender, which Vicky and the others will continue to expand throughout this week. But I also want to share something that I, I wrote this morning. Okay, here it is. There's only one thing left. Oh, by the way, I should say that this was inspired by, by one comment or one sentence that uh, I sent out this morning uh, to the small group that is doing the enlightened, uh, the Enlightenment Partner Program. That one line is, when you are as uncompromising with the truth as the truth is uncompromising with you, you will remember everything. So hold that. We're going to come back to it. There's only one thing left for you to do. And you've always known what it is. Once again, when you are as uncompromising with the truth as the truth is with you, you will know everything. I'm going to pause there for just one moment. What does it mean to be uncompromising with the truth? It means simply this, that there is no wiggle room. There is no part of us that says, yes, but. There's no part of us that says, okay, but maybe later. It's right now. The truth is right now. And when we realize right now that I am that truth, then we will be uncompromising but what the mind what the ego does is it looks for a thousand compromises because each one of those compromises is an, another in its mind possible exception there are no exceptions to the truth that's all this is saying the truth is forever true but i have to make the decision to know only that to be uncompromising with that truth. And then I realize that that truth is completely uncompromising with me. And this is the same as saying, I am as God created me. If I remain as God created me, fear has no meaning. Sickness, pain, and death are not real. That's what that means. So we have to make a resolute decision in our mind to be uncompromising with this one statement this one statement of fact only love is real uncompromising that may seem difficult or challenging at first only because your mind has been so accustomed to compromise that's the only reason but when when you make a resolute decision like no more i i'm i am sticking with this come hell or high water that's an interesting statement. Hell or high water. What do hell and high water have to do with each other? I don't know. Maybe the high water is, is really just, okay, when I am taken by the highest water, I will be where I've always been, the heaven that I never left, or I can be in hell. Well, guess where you find yourself in the perceptual mind? where you make an exception for everything and compromise everything. You're in hell. 
the only good thing is you know that now. The only good thing is that you realize that hell is an experience in my mind, which I literally choose. Or I can be in the high water and realize that I never left heaven. Okay. So once again, when you are as uncompromising with the truth as the truth is with you, you will remember, remember, pull it all together, everything. If this is true, that you've always known this, then why have you allowed a constant stream of distractions to stand between you and the uncompromised decision before you now? Why have you allowed all of this other nonsense to interfere with the reality that you know to be real? Deep down, every single one of you knows this, but we've literally chosen against it. Why? Anybody know the G word? Guilt. Yeah, guilt. Some level, for some reason, that little feeling, that little twinge of guilt got in. Maybe I did something. Maybe I allowed something to block. But nothing can, can block everything. Wow, nothing can block everything. Everything is what it is and will forever remain. The only thing that can block is the experience of that. And that's the decision that I made through guilt. Okay. Is it really so frightening to recognize that forgiveness gives you everything you really want to the point that what you never wanted becomes the object of your desire? What you never really wanted becomes the object of your desire? That's crazy. But that shows the insanity of the ego mind. This distraction is the only thing blocking. Blocking your entry into an experience so completely foreign to this world and the lens that you've chosen to see everything through. In every situation, we, we do have to choose a lens, right? And that lens, depending upon if you're choosing one that is helpful or one that is not is either going to bring things into perfect focus or completely out of focus. Up until now, the lens that we choose within the egoic perspective has taken everything out of, per, out of focus to the point that we can't see anything as or for what it really is. Everything is seen in distortion. But what this is saying is that when you choose the lens that was given to you before time began, everything will come into complete focus. So once again, this distraction is the only thing blocking your entry into an experience completely foreign to this world and the lens you have chosen to see everything through. Change the lens and the world changes as well. All from your decision to receive that which has always been offered and reject that which could never be received. To receive that which has always been offered and to reject that which could never be received. Your limitation. I'm looking at the back of the room and I see the lesson, by grace I live, by grace I am released. I don't think that's the actual lesson of the day, but it will do. <laughs> it's through grace and what is this moment that you're in right now grace <laughs> it's grace you wouldn't be hearing this if that were not true you would not be hearing this if you were not ready to hear this now that you have heard it what will you do with it change the lens maybe why not okay one more paragraph the choice is before you now, all from your decision to be as uncompromising with the truth as the truth has consistently been with you. There's nothing to wait for, no new fantasy that will rise in your mind that offers you more than everything. You see, that's what the ego always promises. Here is a fantasy that will give you more than everything. Guess what? That's not possible because everything is in you now. 
There's nothing, no such thing as more than everything. Everything is already yours. You only need to claim that which has always been given. Now is the moment this can happen. So why wait another second? The truth knows no compromise. The truth knows no compromise and is being held out to you right now. So back to our original statement. When you are as uncompromising with the truth as the truth is uncompromising with you, you will know everything. <laughs> Sounds simple. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Just try it. Maybe for an hour. What does it feel like to be uncompromising, which is just simply knowing who I am through knowing who everyone else is by giving that gift away to everyone that I perceive? So, Vicki, I'm going to turn it over to you. I know you're going to have something really great and practical to take us right home. Thank you, Brother James. Well, first of all, we're going to miss you next week. And, um, but we're excited that you're going into this family retreat with your brothers from the Franciscan order and, and sisters. We have sisters in our order. Oh, as well. Wonderful. That's so, really because wonderful. we're the community of Francis and Claire. Oh. That's one of the main reasons why I joined. Oh, good reason. <laughs> anyway, we will miss you, but we're going to have quite a rock and roll week. I think I'm, I'm excited. I've invited some of our extended family that many of you know, either from here or from, you know, other things you sat in on to share around this same theme of surrender, Dorothy. What does that look like from many points of views, from many, perhaps many different traditions, but always comes to the same experience. And we call that most commonly love. That's what we call it. And the lens that you were speaking about, the easiest lens to hold is love and to let it be the bar that everything comes up against. And what is the everything that comes up? It's the outcomes that we're looking for. The places we think will give us something more than the everything that love gives us. And it's not to say that we aren't attached to them. We very much are. And that's part of how we come into what is uncompromising, to just be accepting of where we are. Acceptance of what we are experiencing is the easiest passage for grace to move us through it. Not by judging it or resisting it. Oh, I'm attached to health or this relationship. I can't seem to be without it. I can't whatever. The acceptance of that is what starts that smoothness of energy where instead of battling a false self, we're just letting what seems temporarily an idol or a, a, an important goal to be there without um, working at it. Acceptance takes all the fight out of it. Acceptance just says, okay, this is what it looks like now. I wonder what spirit will do with this. I wonder. And there we are, right back to a lens of love. What will spirit, what will grace, what would love do with this? I can't live without this person or, or I can't survive without this health concern. But what would love have me do with this? So in accepting everything, bringing it to present attention and awareness, it's the unconscious resistance that holds us back without our realizing it. That that's why the things we take for granted, the things we think are, oh, that's okay, that's okay, are the very things that might be in the way. And once we start becoming tuned, attuned to love, we start to question things. I'll give you, so here's an example for me. A couple of weeks ago, I felt led to, um, I take blood pressure medicine because I've always been kind of fast forward. And I just felt, okay, 
I feel like it's time to look at this. What is it that wants to run fast forward? And am I willing to, to look at it and let it be what it is and see what happens? What will spirit do with that? So in the beginning, it scared me because, you know, I can go way high and up and down, but I felt called to it. So there's the lens again, the lens of love and spirit. Okay, just follow the prompt. Just follow the prompt. Let it go up, let it go down. Just accept it. So that's what I've been doing, which for me, because I've taken blood pressure medicine for over 30 something years. So it's a long time. And I just took it for granted. And this was brought to my attention somehow as a way to recognize whatever might be in my mind that I'm not in touch with. So it's a time to welcome everything with no outcome. I may end up going back on that medicine or not, but the goal isn't what I end up doing. The goal is to recognize a place that I see there must have been constriction if I needed some chemical and I'm willing to look at that constriction. And I don't know what the outcome will look like. So I'm just in the passage of it. And very often we find ourselves in the passage of what we've been attached to by accepting it and letting grace unfold either an ease or a way through it. And whatever it looks like is whatever it looks like. If we continue to not hold judgment upon it, then what we're opening to is a present now that fills up whatever it is that we've had constriction around. So finding where we're holding back and accepting it allows the release of it. So I'm in a, in a setup for an, a living example. I'll give you, um, I'll give you um, notices as I go along, but so far I'm doing pretty well. I started pretty high when I stopped uh, last week and it's just coming down, just keeps coming down. And high or low, I follow the guidance. That's the lens. Follow the guidance. Follow the prompt. That's all. There's no guilt if we don't follow it. But there's great freedom being promised and given and received by us if we do follow it. So follow the prompts of your heart. Don't worry about the outcome, what it looks like for ourselves or for each other. Because in present now, everything is supplied for everything, for everyone. The now covers, it covers everything. There is no spot. God is not. Only love, only God, only now. So Brother James, we um, bless you in your next few days. We'll all miss you. But we thank you for the gifts of leadership and brotherhood and direction and for truly being a wonderful spiritual brother and father for this family. We all love you and we, we thank you. Mm. Amen, everybody. Love you all. Thank you, Vicki. I'm going to bring Calico in here just for that cherry on top of the Sunday. But but you did remind me, Vicki, of a, of a song from a musical that I was in when I was much younger, that, that whole idea of just following the guidance. So you, you might recognize this. Try to remember that kind of, start a little higher. Try to remember that kind of September when life was slow and oh, so mellow. Try to remember that kind of September when grass was green and grain was yellow. Try to remember that kind of September when you were a mel tender and cat low fellow. Try to remember, and if you remember, then follow, 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 follow. <laughs> oh, what a great song. So Calico, take us home.
you know, you said it all right there, James. You know, my whole thing is it's about guidance, guidance, guidance. And, you know, it's for listening for guidance. And I got very sloppy in life and didn't listen for guidance most of my life. I just did whatever. And I love the heart stuff, Vicki, that you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, it was about a decade ago. I was trying to get, you know, thinking, oh, it'd be a good idea to get off of it, but I didn't know how to. And then I went to a retreat and forgot the pills and then just got off of them. And then I forgot to go and refill the pills. And it was just like, okay, they're done. So it's like, whatever happens, it's not by chance. Nothing is by chance. It's all for my greater good or a lesson I would learn if I'm resisting it in any way. And it's about following. <laughs> it's like, follow, follow, follow. You know, it's like, follow the guidance. Then you hear it. And I, it took me a while to follow because I'd always doubt it. You know, I'd hear guidance. I go, oh, no, can't be that. And then, you know, eventually I'd come around and go, oh, oh, I guess I'm supposed to follow this guidance now. And it's like, you know, as I got more in the habit, a good habit of listening and following, now it's easy. But in the beginning, I doubted what I was hearing, and then I'd ask other people. And, you know, there was just a whole host of where it wasn't working. And the reality was I just wasn't used to it. And now I'm very used to it. I'm so grateful for it. And, yeah, that leaves me in a grateful place. And I'm, I have a wonderful trip, James. I'll be, I'll be thinking of you in your chapter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be thinking of all of you as well. I'll be tuning in energetically and I'll be following the flow, that divine flow. That's all guidance is. It's a divine flow that we're called to follow. So listen and follow and remember that all you need to do is to change the lens and be uncompromising with what you see when you see reality. Be uncompromising with that because it's always uncompromising with you. And to that we say, Amen, 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 e punto. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. We'll be back next tomorrow, and I'll <laughs> see you next week. Bye-bye.